Yeah, and you didn't even need any biscuits. You just got one for fun. You are such a handsome boy. You are a handsome boy. Did you see the camera? Look at, look at him, call me. Yep, there you go. Hey everybody, welcome back to the latest episode of The Art of the Dog. I've been absent for a few weeks, but I'm back, I'm happy, I'm raring to go, let's learn. Uh, the subject today that I wanted to get into was, it's a sensitive subject. It's about overbreeding. And uh, yeah, I wanna talk about a couple different breeds that I'm very fond of, but I can see problems when I go out into the field and uh, I run into the subject we're gonna talk about. When I'm out in the field, I can almost immediately identify a dog that's coming from a situation of overbreeding. Some of these, some of these incidents can be out and out dangerous. I had a, I had a call and the call was as simple as this. The man called me, he asked me if he, if I could help because his Rottweiler and his English Bulldog were not getting along. So I said, no problem, let's, uh, let's meet tomorrow and we'll see what happens. So I gotta remind you, when I go into a house, I'm very proud of the fact that how I enter a house is, is pretty routine. I like to go to a home, knock on doors, ring doorbells, create as much energy as I can at that door. Truth is what I'm doing is setting the dog up for failure. Because I, if the dog is a jumping dog or excessively barking dog, I want to be able to go to the door, create all of his energy at the door, have the owners kind of stand back. All I want them to do is yell loud enough that I can hear it, come on in. Then I enter the door. What happens uh, once I get on the other side of the door is just fine. I want the owners to do nothing but relax. I want to uh, let the dog know that I am an alpha. So if a dog jumps on me, I will correct the dog. When I correct the dog, I'm not touching the dog. I'm not yelling at the dog. I'm basically only using the method of energy. When I correct the dog and the dog kind of catches on to my message, the, what I'm really doing is letting the dog know that I'm an alpha. By letting him know that I'm an alpha character doesn't mean that I'm the tough guy or the bully or you better listen to me. What it's telling the dog and what my method is telling the dog is that I'm safe. Once the dog realizes I'm safe, then the dog will calm down and we can work. When I talk about overbreeding, good Lord, please don't think I'm just talking about Rottweilers. This problem exists with German Shepherds, with Poodles. It exists with Labradoodles. It just exists because there is such a thing as overbreeding. And again, I, I just can't reiterate enough. Do your research, be careful, get references, talk to other people who use this breeder, and just be very, very careful of the puppy that you're probably paying a lot of money for. You don't want to suffer from the results of overbreeding. You know, there's this other Rottweiler. The poor puppy was only seven months old, and a man told me that the dog had already attacked his son. And uh, could I come and just evaluate the dog? Well, I got to the house and I asked the man to put a muzzle on the dog, which he apparently forgot. So when I walked in the house after raising the energy and knocking on doors and ringing doorbells, I was approached by this big seven month old Roddy, who, uh, <laughs> happy for me, was very, very attentive of me and very, very friendly. So I did correct him, he did take correction, everything went very well. Well, I sat at the kitchen table with the man, the man was in his 70s, and his son came down uh, stairs to join us to talk about the dog. At this point, the son sat across the table from us. I could tell the son was terrified of this dog. I had the dog actually on a red leash in between my legs and we were getting along fine. 
but he still did not have a, a, a muzzle on. And at one point he started to growl at me. And I said, all right, to the gentleman who was in his 70s, the owner of the dog, I believe it's time to put a muzzle on the dog. So he agreed, he reached over to put a muzzle on the dog, he, which he did, and he did not put it on properly. The dog shook his head once and the muzzle just went flying across the room. Well, this was unnerving, but like I said, remind you, reminding you that this is only a seven month old puppy. So he grabbed the dog by the collar and tried to put the muzzle on again. The dog wasn't gonna have it. The dog literally attacked the owner right in front of me. It was a disaster. Everybody's hollering and screaming and yelling. And the man was bit so severely on his arms that he was bleeding all over the place. While I reached, I had the dog still on red leash. I reached, pulled the dog back. The owner jumped up, grabbed the red leash and put the dog back into a bedroom. Now, what are we gonna do? Well, this is, this is really became kind of weird because the man just wanted to go to the hospital, which I didn't blame him. And, but he wanted the dog put down right now. Well, you can't just do that. And he called the veterinary clinic and the veterinary clinic warned him that uh, he had to get an okay from the county, uh, the health department, because they, the vet would just not put a dog down. They're not allowed to just put a dog down unless the dog's evaluated or it's quarantined or whatever the process is. So this man, um, well, by the way, the veterinary clinic knew I was at this call. The veterinary clinic also, I found, I was very aware how unstable and unbalanced this particular dog was. So they talked to the health department. Everybody was in agreement they could put the dog down. Here's where it got weird. The son was had nothing to do with the dog. The owner wanted to get to the hospital because he was bleeding so severely, which made sense. So guess who wound up taking the dog to the vet to be put down? You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, me. So what I did was I, I opened the door that the dog was locked in the bedroom and pulled the old, hey puppy, you wanna go for a ride? And he's like, oh, of course I do. So he was very happy to come back on the red leash and go jump in my van and go for a ride. Oh, well, I survived that one. Um, unfortunately, it was a very sad night and particularly sad for a seven month old Rottweiler. But again, this is the point that I'm trying to make. You got to be so careful of this overbreeding, regardless of the breed. I've seen the same problem with uh, little uh, miniature uh, Australian Shepherds. I've seen this breed with the German Shepherds. I've seen this problem with, uh, with any kind of dog out there. Uh, my favorite dog is a shelter dog. What can I say? That's the way I am. But I love these uh, mixed breeds because I've never heard of an overbred mixed breed. Again, I just want to reiterate, yeah, the story was about a Rottweiler. I'm very dear to Rottweilers. I have a great time with Rottweilers that I work with, but every once in a while, regardless of the breed, and I have run into it a couple of times with Rottweilers and Shepherds, there's such a thing as overbreeding. Overbreeding is very dangerous. Overbreeding creates defective animals. So again, when you're looking for an animal, uh, you're looking for a breed, I want you to do a lot of homework on who the breeder is and whether they can stand up and stand behind the product that they're putting on you because you're the one that's gonna be finally responsible for it, not the breeder. Uh, we had Michelle Mechlek on a couple weeks ago and she got into the fact that, yeah, German Shepherds are the greatest dogs in the world. That's her favorite breed. But there is such a thing as overbreeding and that can be very troublesome.